Happy Saturday morning, and welcome to the Ludlow Fringe Festival. My name is Richard Skipper of Richard Skipper Celebrates. Now, my shows are always about celebrating other artists and their bodies of worth. Now, today is very easy for me because not only am I celebrating a great artist, I am also celebrating a great friend. And that's my dear friend, Mindy Fradkin, AKA Princess Wow of the Smile Revolution. Now, before I even knew Mindy, I knew of her work, I knew all about her, and I was familiar with her colorful hats, the colors. I'm a big fan of colors, as you can probably see, and so is Mindy. And Mindy came up with the Smile Revolution, which she's been doing for years. She's appeared on television, she had her own radio program. It's all about celebrating the celebration of the smile. And when the pandemic hit, and by the way, it's 170 days today since our theaters in New York shut down. Mindy, rather than sitting in a corner, sitting on her couch, waiting for life to begin, she began doing her weekly celebration of the Smile Revolution. Every Monday and every Wednesday at two o'clock New York time, you can see Mindy where she comes in, she shares stories, she shares baking tips, she shares whatever it is that she can do to make you smile. And I'm convinced that by the end of today, you're gonna to be smiling and I hope that you carry this in energy with you. So I'm going to leave the room and I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy Mindy as all of you are going to enjoy her. And then at the end of this, you'll get a chance to know Mindy the way that I do. So stick around, enjoy the show and remember, whatever happens today, keep smiling. I'll see you on the other side. This is the Smile Revolution, and I'm Princess Wow, also known as Mindy Fradkin. Oh, wow, I have to spell it, W-O-W. -W. And I know, actually, for those of you watching from the UK, it's tea time, right? It's 4 o'clock. Here in New York, it's 11 a.m. So I have my tea with hats. Of course, England is the home of the hats, right? And I make hats, too. I'm a woman of many hats is what it is. And this is uh, from the Red Hat Society. Have you ever heard of it? So, of course, I have to have my, I don't have any English tea, though. Sorry. I have hibiscus tea. I love hibiscus tea. So I'm going to have some, actually. Mm. It's good. I love hibiscus tea. So the my mission is, which I started in 2005 when my dad passed away. The last time I saw him conscious, he gave me a big grin. And that smile changed my life for the better. Now, the mission is we raise awareness to the healing power of a genuine smile. Sincere smiles only apply, of course. The Dalai Lama said there's 16 kinds of smiles. So these are all just back with love and joy. So when I my dad passed away, and I, I this actually, this whole project started from tragedy. I mean, I was I had a difficult childhood mentally and emotionally. And it was a difficult relationship with my dad, but we had a lot of healings over the years. And as I and I was with him the last few weeks of his life in Florida in the hospital, and I got a lot of blessings. And then that last smile changed my life for the better. And that's how this whole project started. And then I was on the radio a lot in Woodstock, New York. And I launched the idea that year in 2005 after not almost not making it. I was really having a really difficult year. And um, I just, it just came to my thought after I was performing, I do, I was doing for many years, a one woman show with my hats I designed and I was doing it um, for an independent film in New York. And out of my mouth came, we need a smile revolution in the world. It was like this inspired thought. And then I was like, that's a great idea. Well, I didn't start it right away. And then later that year, I uh, launched it on the radio and then 
my whole life changed for the better. I went from being pretty self-involved to how can I help the world smile more? And then I had my own radio show and I've done concerts with Pete Seeger, the folk legend who um, headlined in Woodstock. And um, my was been my ex-husband, Roland Musa, and I started writing songs for the Smile Revolution. And uh, and so I have a whole album of Smile songs and I'm going to be singing one song that Laura Molitor wrote. Uh, Roland Musa added some um, added some words to it. Uh, I'm going to sing that in a minute. Well, anyway, so we've, I've done a lot of things over the years to promote the Smile Revolution. Of course, my colors, bright colors, make people smile. So um, I'm going to start with the um, the Smile With Me songs. It's called Smile With Me. And I have a ukulele that I'm really just a beginner, but I'm going to show it to you because it's kind of fun. I've decorated this myself. And... Um, but I want to first thank the Lobo Fringe Festival and Richard Skipper Celebrates for hosting me today. And I really appreciate it. And I'm an Anglophile. I don't know if I told you this. I haven't told you yet. I love anything English because my grandfather was from London and I've always been obsessed with anything England. I've only been to London once many years ago. And uh, I think it's time I'm a time to come back soon. Well, I'm, I'm actually, this is one of my ways of connecting in with you all in England. So um, here we go. And just bear with me. I'm a beginner ukulele player, but it's just, I'm just having, we're just having fun here. Okay. So here we go. Oh, hold it one second. I'm wearing a bracelet over here and I can't wear this bracelet. So, okay. Give me a little smile and take my little smile and we'll just smile a while. So everyone can see I may not know your name But our world is the same With all the fear and pain A smile can set us free Smile with me Laugh with me Love, sorry, love with me, smile with me. I need your healing smile to get me through the miles. This journey lasts a while, a smile will ease the way. And when you can't smile, can't find that happy child. I'll be there with a smile to brighten up your day. Smile with me. Laugh with me. Love with me. Smile with me. That's it. I'm not playing anymore. I feel like I need to rehearse more. This is very spontaneous, my show. Okay, wait, my hat's falling off. It's hard to get this on and off with, with, a, with a ukulele. Anyway, um, I am going to talk about today. Actually, my theme of my show is you are not alone. And I know a lot of us have felt really alone. Well, I'm here with my kitty cat, Tiggy. And uh, during was during lockdown and everything. And, um, but, you know, having a cat is like, was it, Tiggy like saved my life. Having my, my cat with me during lockdown was like such an amazing, I just, I don't think I could have done it without her. And um, so um, I wanted to talk about that, the healing power of pets actually. And if you don't have a pet, not everybody loves animals, but if you do, it's just like, you know, so healing emotionally and mentally and just in so many ways to have a cat, the responsibility or a dog or whatever. And um it's been, I've been thinking about it a lot recently about how, and a lot of people have been adopting animals during the lockdown. And um, so if you want to uh, adopt an animal or donate to an animal shelter, um, wherever you are, I'm encouraging that because they're so, so, they're so important to help other people and they need homes as well. And actually what I want to say about how this, this smile revolution started actually way back is I just wanted to say that when I was in high school, I was always a spiritual seeker and I was reading Eastern religion and it said um, to set an example, like be an example for the world. And 
I said to myself, and I was depressed a lot and having a lot of emotional turmoil. And I remember saying to myself that one day I would set an example of happiness and uplift to the world. And so I set my intentions. I thought, I just think that that was really interesting. And that was like many years ago. And anyway, what I found out from Richard Skipper is, is that um, last week was National Lemonade Day in the USA. And um, I never heard of it. So I made lemon muffins, and I'm going to show them to you in a minute. And it started in 2007. A woman, when she was a child, wanted to get a pet turtle. And her father said um, she want, he wanted her to earn money. And so she, he, he set her up in a lemonade stand. And that was how the idea came. So she earned her own money to buy the pet turtle. And then she started National Lemonade Day. And it's like all over the country with kids, like it's teaching them how to have their own business and sell lemonade and make money. And it's a wonderful project. And um, so here, I wanted to show you, I made my lemon. I'm really into baking. And I do baking shows too. And so I wanted to show you my lemon muffins. Here they are. Aren't they cute? Anyway, they're good too. And Richard Skipper is going to get some. He likes lemon. I love lemon cake and everything. So anyway, that's that. And then um, the next thing I want to talk about was Nelson Mandela. He was in prison for 27 years. And he said that, whoops, wait a second. Sorry, I had this new computer. He said that he could, when he was in prison all those years, he could he could think. And he said before he went to prison, he was so busy, like day and night, that he never really could think. And he said it was a good thing for him. And then, you know, he left prison and became the first black president and healed the nation of the of all the division of the black and white. My smile is moving. I gotta fix it. It's gonna bother me during the show. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna read you some quotes. Nelson Mandela, there can be no greater gift than that of giving one's time and energy to help others without expecting anything in return. And it's in your hands to create a better world for all who live in it. And I have a smile quote. Uh, when I had my radio show, uh, uh, one of the listeners sent this plaque to me. A smile is something nice to see. It doesn't cost a cent. A smile is something all your own. It never can be spent. A smile is welcome anywhere. It does away with frowns. A smile is good for everyone to ease life's ups and downs. Now, I don't smile all the time, okay? I, it's about giving and receiving smiles. Sometimes you have to smile at me to remind me to smile, right? Because people, sometimes people say, you're talking about smiling. You're not smiling enough. I'm like, okay, look, I, I'm still working on it because like I grew up not smiling very much. And so it's a, it's about me learning how to smile as well. So hopefully you can smile just looking at all my colorful clothes. Okay. Now um, I have a one woman show called ageless wonders about being an older woman in our society and the ages. I mean, we're really ageless and eternal. And I have all this research on this too. Now I my anyway, so here's a book. Age doesn't matter unless you're a cheese by Catherine and Ross Petrus. And um, test pilot General Chuck Yeager said, unfortunately, many people do not consider fun an important item on their daily agenda. For me, that was always high priority in whatever I was doing. Now for me too, it's like, I've always said, oh, don't, you know, have fun. Like I would, you know, I've been saying that for years, have fun. A lot of people forget to have fun when they become an adult. And then musician B.B. King, when my mother was dying, talking to me, she said, always try and be kind and nice to people. And if you do that, somebody will always speak up for you. And I've found that to be a fact. They really do. And then I have the shoe calendar that my friend Leslie Riley gave me. And this is the shoe of the day of the weekend. And it's from the early 1900s. Isn't that cool? It's really neat. So I love that. And um, let's see, I want to introduce you to somebody. This is Gumby. If you have never met Gumby, Gumby comes on my show a lot because Gumby is always smiling and giving you a big hug, right? And then um, I've got Gumby's kids. Gumby's kids are Gumby and Pokey. They're saying hi, they're very friendly. And uh, let's see. Oh, I got to introduce you to somebody else. Minnie Mindy. I was doing costumes for a movie years ago. 
See, she's got her smile bag. I had my smile bag too. Um, here's my smile bag. Laura Molitor gave that to me. So anyway, this is from a picture of me. Isn't that neat? Anyway, so Minnie Mindy became came into being last year because when I was doing costumes for a movie years ago, um, the special effects guy said, they're easy Mindy dolls. I'm like, oh, okay. So I never forgot it. And so finally it, she appeared. And uh, how I became a performer, actually, I started when I was nine. For my, I booked myself for my birthday party, but that's a whole other story. Um, what happened was um, I was doing this movie and Michael Janae, who's an award-winning actor, on Broadway and everything, TV, he said, you need to be in front of the camera, not behind the camera. You, you, you could be the next comedy sensation. Well, anyway, that's how I started doing stand-up comedy. And it's just all these things just unfolded over the years. Well, anyway, the next thing is, is joy jars. You ever heard of a joy jar? You can make your own joy jar. And um, I just decorated this. And you can write down all the things that make you feel happy and joyful. And here's one that I wrote, talking with, taking walks with friends, social distancing, and you could wear a mask if you want. Anyway, if you need to. So anyway, so joy jars. It's a good thing. And then, um, I don't know, is anybody, is, is the chat open? I don't know if anybody's chatting. Well, anyway, I'm wondering what makes you smile? One word that makes you smile and if you have a pet, how does she, how does he or she make you smile? How does she make you feel? And what are you grateful for? Like, the thing is, I know it's a difficult time. We're having a pandemic. And that's why I started this, to make people smile. And it helps me, too. Um, and uh, I'm just, you know, it's like, um, I don't know what I was saying. I'm just, like, forgetting what I'm saying. Anyway, I think I'm nervous today because I'm not used to doing this internationally. Well, actually, I have been. People in England have been watching my show. So I have all these fun things to show you. I have my smile here. I got all these fun things that I've accumulated over the years. The next segment actually is Richard Barone. Now Richard Barone is an acclaimed musician, friend of mine, a dear friend. And he has a, a, a song called Glow. And he's actually done a lot of performing in, in the UK. And he works with Donovan, a famous uh, singer from Ireland and um, this song Glow just went with my theme today, You're Not Alone. Now I know that a lot of people are having a difficult time and if you're, there's a lot of domestic violence up and there's a lot of people feel depressed if they're alone and everything, but you're not alone because we're all, we have social media, we have our pets if you have one and we have each other to help us all go through this experience, which is you know really, really hard in different ways for everybody. But this song, if you can look at the good, that there's always good going on. If you can focus on gratitude and there's, you know, and, and just even if it's small, just one little thing to be grateful for. And just it'll just magnify or write down a whole 10 things that, that you're grateful for, even if it's just small little things. So this this song, Glow, is um, really one of my favorite songs. And I'm going to play it for you now. And I'm actually going to put the lyrics up, too. And here it is. It's Richard Barone's Glow. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see here. Go wherever you go. The all that you feel. The all that you know. The sun that's so high. The sun setting low. Darkness will come. I'm going to put a different hat on, so. Light begins to show, even the stars. This whole is new. Nothing gets old. Vibrating streams. Everything glows. So everything glows.
the glow. Glow. You are the glow. You're not alone. Not alone. Really fun video. You go wherever you go, with all that you uh -huh. are, with all that you know. Sun's at it high, uh -huh. sun's at it low. Darkness will come, darkness will go. Anyway, I hope you like that song, and um, I think that's my show today. Oh, there's another song. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, and this is Richard. You saw Richard a little bit on the show. You can see his picture. And um, so, focus on the good. It's always going on. There's always good going on, and there's always there's always a reason to be grateful for something. And um, I thank the Floodlow Fringe Festival and Richard Skipper Celebrates for hosting me again today. And um, donate to a charity, adopt a pet if you love if you love animals. And um, I will hand you over to Richard and join the smile revolution and go out and glow. Hello, Princess Wow. Hi. Mindy, I love you so much. You make me smile. Uh, I tune into, uh, you know this, it's true. I tune into your show uh, every day if I possibly can. And if I don't watch it live, I watch it afterwards. Right. Um, I want to ask you. It's actually Wednesdays and Fridays, actually. Oh, but it could change. well, maybe I've just been watching it on Mondays. Well, it was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It changed over the last March. Yeah. You know? Anyway, it could change again. But anyway, yeah. Okay. But, you know, I want to thank you for all that you do to keep everyone upbeat and everything. But I want to ask you, how are you doing right now, really, in the midst of what we're going through here in New York? I'm actually doing good. And I, I'm actually, you know, I have my challenges. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I do. If you want me to make a list of all my challenges, I mean, we all have them, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy time for anybody. And we're all dealing with it in different ways. However, the truth of the matter is, is that I'm very prayerful and spiritual person. And so that is like my anchor. And also, always, but also this show has helped me so much. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, from the first week of pandemic, my friend Abby Shear said, can you do an uplifting Facebook Live? Because I was like racked with fear, like the first few days of lockdown, like we all were. And she sensed that in me. And I'd done some uplifting Facebook Lives occasionally. And she asked me to do one. And I said, okay. And I just like jumped to it. 
And then I did one every day that first week, mid-March. Every day I did one. And I was like putting all my colors, costumes on. And it made me feel good. And then it was like, oh, and here's my Smile Revolution radio show uh, research that I had. over. I kept everything. And I started reading Smile poems. And I just had all this information there, which I hadn't used in years. And I had my Smile songs. I have a whole album. So I like, started singing my Smile songs. And it was just kind of unfolded and I made me feel better. And then, and everybody else too. And so then it was like, okay, I think I'll just do three times a week. Then I went Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then recently the last couple of months, it's been two days a week, Wednesdays mm -hmm. and Fridays, but it could change again. But it's like now it's two days a week live. And it's really, it saved my life doing the show for me. I mean, it's been blessing me so much. Well, I'm finding that for myself, I mean, with the interviews that I do and everything that I do, having that focus, to move towards that. And it also really takes the focus off of you and what you have right. to do, put your message out to everyone else. I wanna ask you, what room are you in right now? Uh, this is my living room. Now, is every room in your house devoted to smiling? Um, pretty much, I mean, it's pretty colorful here in my house. No, I, I mean, love, yeah, pretty I love much every your room. colors, I really do. I love what? all the colors. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much. I have like my stuff then. I have my giant stuff get go with a tutu and on um, this princess smiles. I have her. She sits on my bed. She's just like, you know, four feet tall. So I have her sprawled out on my bed. So every room is pretty like, um, you know, whimsical. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a lot of original art. I have a lot of original colorful art because I have a lot of friends who are painters. You know, so I've accumulated a lot of art, huh? You get a lot of gifts from your uh, fans and friends as well that uh, are all about smiling, and that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, my friend Ann Stockdale, who's one of my favorite facial friends in, in out west in Seattle area, she's an amazing painter, and all her paintings are like super colorful. And she's like this incredible singer musician too. And when she saw one of my pictures with the kid, I do events with kids too, you know, and I, one of my kids' shows, I do a kid's version of this, too, occasionally. And I did one on the Lolo Fringe. It's on there, on their website. And she saw one of my pictures of me with all my colors with all the kids and all the props and everything. Mm -hmm. And she sent me a painting as a gift because she was so inspired. So well, those things happen. Well, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, I'm also a very spiritual person. And I'm doing a workshop that I started about five weeks ago. And one of the things that we're talking about right now is celebrating that uh, child uh, that we were when we were five years old. Right. And I know that you've done a lot of children's programming as well. And when mm -hmm. I look at you, um, I always see that child just bursting through. But tell us a little bit about the five-year-old Mindy Fratkin. Oh God, the five-year-old. I guess I was always very imaginative. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know. I just, I always had a strong imagination and I guess I was always very theatrical because when I was nine, I booked myself for my own birthday party. It was the Beatles had come to America and I got a guitar and a wig and I was performing <laughs> and my cousin Mark we were the same age and he like talked about it for 30 years. I'm so I'm not joking. He kept talking about that Beatles party. I'm like, I guess I must be a performer. It must've been a great show. You know? So I was always yeah. kind of like had a, you know, I was always an artist and creative and, imaginative. And what makes you smile the most? Well, my Tiggy, my, my cat Tiggy, she's always so to comfort and makes me happy. I just love being with her and looking in her eyes. And also, um, I think when I get dressed in all my costumes, like all the colors, I've been doing this for like decades. This is nothing new. You know, all the colors and the yeah. outrageous out. That's why I got the name Princess Wow. Well, as what? I said in my introduction, I knew of you and your work long before you. Really? I didn't know that. Well, I'm yeah. not, I'm vice versa. I knew about you too. But the thing is, is that um, what happened was I was always wearing these outrageous outfits and costumes. And I was wearing colored hair in the 90s before mm -hmm. it was in style in New York City. And right. it got me a lot of publicity. It got me on Good Day New York four times, the New York Times. I got all this publicity. I was like, everybody in New York was wearing black. Mm hmm Right. And I was looking like this. And I love it. I absolutely. So these producers would stop me on the street in New York. You know, that's how I got, you know, and then my personality. It wasn't just the colors, but the thing in, I was making hats and, you know, and I got into stand up comedy too because of, you know, that cop, the movie I did. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that um, 
I don't know. I just, I just feel, okay. So I got the name Princess Wow because people sometimes are like, oh, you call yourself a Princess Wow. It was given to me, the name. Mm -hmm. so I had another name, the Mad Hattress. So that was given to me too by two writers in New York because I was performing with my hats for years. And I still do, but it's like part of my show. <laughs> how, so many hats, hats, how many hats do you have? I usually have about, I don't know, 50 or 100 or something. Wow. I always have like, yeah. But the thing is, is that I was like at the spiritual retreat years ago in the 90s. And I was, I don't know, I was just talking to this mm -hmm. guy at this retreat. And he, he started calling me Wow. It was like, and he's a theater director, of course. And so I got the nickname Wow. And then I was calling myself Miss Wow as a nickname because I still had the Mad Hatteras. And then my girlfriend, who was writing for the New York Times at that time, mm -hmm. a prominent writer, Vicky Vickery Echo, she said, you're not Miss Wow, you're Princess Wow. And I said, I like that because I was looking for another stage name I could live with long term. Like the Mad Hatteras, I don't know. It just wasn't like, I didn't want to live with that like forever. So then I didn't use it right away. But anyway, like months or months or so later, I just like decided it felt like the right name for me. And I kept it. It just felt right. Now, you mentioned something in your closing remarks that I really want to hit upon right now, uh, uh, diverting away from this for just a second. Yeah. And that's the importance of our pets and giving to a charity. And I was watching the news last night. And unfortunately, due to COVID, um, a lot of... Uh, Older dogs and cats have uh, their owners have passed on, and they have been uh, sent to shelters. And I have a very dear friend who adopted an older dog uh, just a few weeks ago. And if any of you out there are able, if you're thinking of getting a pet at this point, please consider getting one of these pets that have been displaced because of their owners um and mm -hmm. covid um mm -hmm. and you know and this is you know as you said also and i'm not saying anything that none of us don't know about um this is a it, you know affected all of us and infected because we're all going through this together as a right. friend of mine says we're all in this together but we're not in the same boat now let's take us out of the pandemic for a moment. what makes that smile of yours turn into a frown? What are the things that really get under your skin? Oh, um, physical problems. You know, I'm having some issues right now. I mean, just those kind of things are just like frustrating mm -hmm. and like make you feel like, oh, it's like, how, you know, how much longer am I going to have to deal with this? You know, like that kind of thing. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Oh, well, just, you know, I don't want to get it. We're not getting into politics, so we're not going, oh, we're not going to go to politics. We're not going into politics. Okay. But I do want to say, regardless of what you're on, vote, vote, vote. No, we have to vote. We've got Let to vote. Voice be heard. We, have to we have to vote. Whatever uh, you know, them. Let's go back. Uh, knowing you the way that I do, uh, you know, I love to throw dinner parties. And the very last dinner party that I had before this. Right was before lockdown. You were sitting at our table. Um, I want to go all the way back. Uh, you're originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Right, uh, right. Tell us a little bit about your family. I mean, do you have brothers, sisters? I have a sister who lives on Orcas Island in mm -hmm. Washington State. Mm -hmm. From my my mother um, was married three times, so um, it's she's my half sister. Okay, from my mother and yeah, from my mother, and uh, I had brothers. Um, from my mom and from my stepmother and my dad mm -hmm. um, in their half. I have all half. I'm, I'm the only one for my mom and dad because they both got remarried when I was little. Now, because your mother remarried several times, did you move around a lot or did you have the roots of staying in one house growing up? Well, I, no, but she didn't get, she didn't get divorced the second time. Well, mm -hmm. she got, they got divorced. My parents got divorced when I was two. So um, I was like, shit, my parents live like, 10 minutes apart. So I was like back, I grew up like every, I was like back and forth, but I was mostly with my mother. And then <clears throat> the weekends I would, um, my dad had a boat when I was growing up. So I, I did, we did a lot of boating excursions. Mm -hmm. so that was fun. Mm -hmm. But my dad was like 10 minutes away. Now, when you were growing up in Baltimore, uh, was your family exposed to the arts at all? Did you uh, grow up listening to cast albums, or what? What kind of music were you listening to? Well, I was into I was a hippie, and I was okay. into rock music. I was like totally a rock rock person. Like, oh, well, I was into Donovan, which I was just told, Richard Brown like works with Donovan. Mm -hmm. I loved Donovan. I loved you know um, the Beatles, and you know. Um, well, when I was little, I was into um, 
Mark Lindsay, um, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Okay. And I don't know, people are different generations watching this. They probably don't even know who I'm talking about. But um, I had a huge crush on Mark Lindsay, who I'm actually in touch with on Facebook. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So it's fun. I met him actually in LA when I lived in Los Angeles. I met him in the, in the 90s or 80s. No, it was the 80s. In the 80s, I met him actually. It was like, oh my God. It was amazing. And how did you make your way to New York? Well, I was lit. Okay. When I was growing up, my dad would go shop. My dad and my stepmother, Sherry, would take me to New York on um, buying trip. My dad used to buy clothes in New York. So I would, gr I would grew up coming to New York City and I always loved New York City. And I always like, was like so excited to come to New York. And then when I was a teenager, I was on a teen tour to Europe and all my friends were from New York City or Scarsdale. You know, they're all from New York. Mm -hmm. so I always had friends in New York. I was always visiting my friends in New York. So I was always connected to New York. And I just always loved New York. And mm -hmm. um, so that's how that, and then when I moved to, I was living in Los Angeles going to college. And I just, when I left college, I was like, I, I just I was obsessed. I had to get to New York. So it was like, now, after, what, what did you major in when you went to college and where did you go to college? Well, I went to several, but it was like, I was, I was a photography major. Okay. Yeah, I was always in high school. That's what got me through high school was photography. And I always loved to shoot portraits and documentary. I was really into all that. So um, I ended up, I was at Art Center College of Design. And then I ended up going, then I switched over to fashion. Because I was always like into my family where I came from a fashionable family. Mm -hmm. so I grew up, <clears throat> I grew up either wearing like really fancy clothes or hippie clothes. Or I'd go to the thrift shops and my parents would freak out. And I'd be wearing these funky, cool clothes, you know. But it was like I was always into clothes. And um, and so then, I don't know, I switched to fashion. And then I graduated from the Fashion Institute in Los Angeles. And I combined both things and I got into fashion styling, wardrobe styling when I came to New York. Now, did you do any performing at all in Los Angeles? Or did that all happen after you got to New York? I was, I was doing some modeling. Okay. And now... Uh, in Beverly Hills for this hairdresser. I was like, I look totally different now. Hold it. Okay, wait a second. Okay. I'm gonna show you what I look like in LA. Oh, wow. Wow. I love that picture. Yeah, my friend Jim Hagopian, he was a, well, he is a very, uh, so he was a very successful photographer and now he's gotten into film. But he he did that photo of me, and he got a makeup artist, and my I was doing modeling for this Beverly Hills hairstylist. So that's for that. That's when I was doing that. Now, yeah. so when you got to New York and you make the decision, I'm going to pursue a career as an entertainer. Uh, I don't think of you as a performer. I think of you as an entertainer. Do you know the difference? Well, yeah. No, tell me what's the difference. <laughs> Okay. Know. What's the difference? Uh, for all of our uh, friends out there that are in the arts, uh, a performer, a trained seal is a performer. A trained seal is uh, interested in the outcome. And for me, an entertainer is always in the process. And even watching you today, I think you're in the process. You're very much in the moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if the hat starts to come off, you acknowledge that. You don't ignore it. Right. Uh, you know, if you... Uh, are having an issue or anything, you embrace it. I do. You are always in the moment. Yeah. And that's, and that's what makes you a great entertainer. Thank uh, you. I'm to make the smile show. Okay, wait. Yes. Okay. So, I can't really see it now. It's okay. So when you uh, make the decision that you're going to go down this path, how did that uh, begin to unfold? Well, so what now? What happened was I didn't come to New York to be a performer. I came to I was doing word I was going to do I was doing wardrobe styling. I was totally into the clothes area mm -hmm. and of the fashion styling thing. Now, what happened was I was doing costumes for a movie because I was a wardrobe stylist and a prop stylist for advertisements and you know different prop billboards stuff like that. And what happened was I literally was doing costumes for this movie in Pittsburgh. And every day, Michael Janae, who's a Broadway actor and screenwriter, mm -hmm. every day said to me, you need to be in front of the camera, not behind the camera. You could be the next comedy sensation. All you have to do is get up and talk. You're so funny. You're like naturally funny. I'm just natural. Mm -hmm. And every day he said it for like the whole summer. So like when you hear this every day from, a, from an incredible actor, I'm like, okay, Michael, all right. 
So I go. Now, let me ask, excuse me for interrupting, but were other people seeing this as well, or was it? Yeah, well, then the special effects guy, which I can't remember his name. He's done like so many movies, but I can't remember his name. But Michael Geneva and I are still friends. We reconnected actually on Facebook. Okay, so mm -hmm. the special effects guy said there needs to be Mindy dolls. You know, it's like I would get stuff like that. Those comments. And after that summer, I went back to New York. I'm like, okay. And I was always making people, making people laugh my whole life. I mean, people were always laughing when I was like talking. And then I did that show when I was nine. You know, but I never thought of myself as a performer. I was always. I, want, I have to tell you, I want my own Mindy doll. I don't know when, where, and how I'll get I'm it. Gonna have to figure this. I know. I, I, I had a child say to me, she wants a, that doll too. I know the doll. She is so great. She really is, and she's bad. I, I will uh, show you one of my dolls. Hold on one second here. This is my Carol Channing doll. Oh, uh, let me get it in the camera. Okay. Um, I, uh, you know, Carol and I were very good friends. And years ago, um, someone came to see one of my shows. And this doll was made actually for Carol Channing. Wow. And it sat on her uh, dressing room table uh, until she stopped performing. And this was sent to me. Uh, with her assistant that she wanted that's me to wonderful. have. Beautiful. Oh, that's it's great. Cool. That's wonderful. Yeah, Richard did um, a show for 20 years being Carol Channing, just so you all know. Oh, well, that's another story. That's it. This right. is all about you. <laughs> I, mean, but I just had to say that because you're showing that. So, okay. No, thank you. So, uh, I had to throw it in. So, you're being told by these people that you're working with, people in show uh, business, in show business, that you yeah. should in front of the camera instead of behind. Yeah. And that's so, how, yeah. Uh, when did you say, okay, I'm going to try yeah. this. I'm going to give this. After that, I mean, after it was all summer. I was with them for every day all summer for months. So it was like in my head every day. They kept telling me over and over because they really saw how funny I was. And they kept saying, you have to do this. So after that summer, I went back to New York City and I just took a stand-up comedy class. Okay. And so what happened in the class was, the first day of class, the teacher says, okay, I want you all to get up and just talk about your life and not be funny. And I'm like, I don't think I can do that. Like, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I was like, I'm always. You know, that's just the that. opposite of what most teachers would say. They would say, get up and be funny. No, the first day of class. He just yeah. wanted you to talk about your life to get mm -hmm. some material. So it's like everybody got up and talked. Nobody laughed. I got mm -hmm. up and talked. The whole room was on the floor hysterical. Laughing hysterically. Mm -hmm. So then the rest of the 10 weeks or whatever it was, we had to write punchlines and do all that stuff and memorize that I could not do. I had to write to, to, to like try to be funny and like write, write funny lines that I bombed the, the rest of the class. So I called up my teacher and I said, I guess I'm not funny. I'm really depressed. And I said, I've been bombing every week. And he said, Mindy, some comedians are naturally funny. Like Robin Williams, they just have an idea what they're going to talk about and they just talk and they're natural. He goes, that's you. It's the last class. I want you to just get up and talk. So I did. I talked about what happened on the way to class. It was rainy. I got wet. I just talked about my experience coming to class. Everybody was laughing again hysterically. So that's what happened in the class. And then I started doing the clubs at night. And then it was like a whole other thing. But I had a director friend who was helping me. So I had like a, he was helping me develop a show. And then I even did, I started in a pilot, TV pilot teaser because I met these, I was in this New York women film and I met these producers and director and they wanted to, they saw my talent too. And they wanted to do a whole pilot with me. So we did this test pilot. So they, and that's all that we did that too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point is, is that what happened was, was that just, yeah, I mean, it, and, but then at night, I was like late at night, people were smoking at the time it was the nineties, yeah. smoking and the clubs, I don't smoke. And it was like, people were drinking and then like the spotlights on me, it was a whole nother thing. So then I did that for like two years at night and I was doing wardrobe during the day, but it was like, I had a lot of stage fright at the time. And then after, two, and I was wearing hats all the time. Mm -hmm. And then after, after two years, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to go make hats. I went to, I was signed up for FIT at night and I started learning how to make hats. And then I, that's how my hat show started mm -hmm. because I, I missed the performing. So then I combined both things with the hats and the, and the performing. And then I created the show with my hats and then I would sell them at the end, like on Madison Avenue or, 
fabulous Fifth Avenue apartments. I would sell them at the end, and then I started selling the top stores. Did you but make money? Always... Did you do like house parties? Did you go to people's homes? Yeah, I did. did. Yep, like you know, well, you know, high end homes, and so it and... was. It's almost like the Princess Well Tupperware party, but it's the yeah. Princess Well. I, I did that for a long time, and I got a lot of publicity. You know, New York Times, and I got all because I was like schlepping a huge app box around New York City with all my costs, I mean, all my outfits, and. The New York Times photographer spotted me and then he did a whole big article, you know, so I would get publicity just from like the way I look and mm -hmm. I would draw, I would walk around New York with a huge hat box, all hand painted, but I, I'm a painter too. So I hand paint the hat box real colorful, you know, so. Do you still do hats? I do, but not, not as much. I mean, you can't do everything. And it, I do, uh, you know, if people ask me to do a custom order, I mean, I, I keep thinking I should get back into it more and everything, but. I'm so busy with my, you know, I'm like, I don't know, I'm really more focused on entertaining and developing, you know, my, I've been doing one woman shows, you know, the Ageless Wonder show mm -hmm. that I wrote. I'm working with a director in LA, Jessica Lynn Johnson, and and I'm develop, writing a new show. So I've been more focused on that. It's hard to do everything, but oh, I do do that. I mean, you know, I do hats and I do when I'm, when people ask me, I have clients and I, I do make hats. Yeah. Well, it's let's just say that, um, you get a phone call and they say, okay, Mindy, we'd like to book you for this hat party. Um, how many hats would you bring to that party? Probably about 30, 25 or 30. Wow. And were, they were all, I'm assuming they were all individual hats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No two hats are alike. Mm -mm. And no. how long did it take you to make each hat? All different. They're all different. Like this one I made. This see this one I made for like performing like if this was like I wore it at the Easter parade it got on TV this hat got on TV on the ABC News at the Easter parade last year because look at this hat right out of thousands yeah. of hats I have never been to the Easter parade in all the years that I've lived in New York um, oh my God Richard we have I to go you would love it would love to go I've never been it I have to, so go, I need to go away to a camp and. Uh, there was a guy that used, you know, he's since passed on and believe it or not, he collected women's hats and they were, um, you know, like church lady hats. I mean, uh, they're called crowns in the black right, uh, right. in the African American church and everything. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I, you know, there's an AMZ church that's directly across the street from where I live, you know, that. And on Sunday morning, I watched these women go in with their hats. I love hats. KT Sullivan, if any of you know KT, she wears hats everywhere she goes. And I would love to see hats come back because I, I just- know, I've been saying it for years. I know, me too. But in England, England, we're talking to people in England, England is the home of the hat. But no. it's more for like horse races. And they, they, it's more for, I don't think they wear them every day in England. I've talked to people. I don't think so. But people in England, I'm connected to a lot of creatives in, in London. And they dress like me. I mean, this is normal in London. I mean, like, <laughs> I so connected. I was to scheduled people. to be in London tonight. So thank you for getting me there in one way or another. Exactly. I did right. yeah. yesterday. Uh, so, um, and I'm, I'm so fascinated in the fact that you created these hats mm -hmm. and that you built a show around the hats. What exactly did that show consist of? It's... For being with Princess Wow, it's like interactive. I put hats on people's heads. It's really me, my personality, and just, you know, I mean, I've done them for like senior homes and women's clubs too and other places. I would bring music and I dance with people, interactive, and it depends on the audience. So like if I'm some in some Fifth Avenue home, it's more, you know, I'm just, I just talk like, like me, I'm like talking and I just tell stories and I'm like interact, talk, putting hats on people's heads and like, oh, and people are going crazy over the hats. And it's just like an experience being with me. And people say, it's just like, I'm in the moment, like you said, I'm in the moment and it's just relaxing and people are just having fun. It's joyful. Now you said earlier that in your show that uh, you were on stage and the words, the smile revolution came out and that inspired you to go with that. What is the biggest thing that you've learned about Mindy Fradkin, uh, uh, thanks to the Smile Revolution? Well, um, I've, I'm, I've learned, well, I've, I've so much, but especially in the pandemic even more mm -hmm. um, during now, during this time, that I, that I, well, I guess I'm, I make, I help people smile. It's mm -hmm. just, I have this ability. It's a talent that I have. I have this a talent and it's natural. 
Mm -hmm. And it's it's my colors, but it's me. But it's like, I don't know. There's something that um, God's given me all these different mm -hmm. talents. And I just, I have an ability to uplift people. I love the fact that you have devoted your life to the smile revolution. Um, I've often said my own personal philosophy, and you can uh, replace this with rock music if you'd like. But I've always said that if everybody began each day with a show tune, there'd be no strife in the world. And it's the same thing. I mean, I get up each day and I've reached a point where I get up and I go, okay, Richard, stay in your lane, put your blinders on and do what you can. Uh, and I find that each time that I deviate from my purpose, um, it I go down the rabbit hole. And right. so I want to applaud you for all that you're doing. I also want to take a moment before we wrap this up and we're getting towards the end of our show, believe it or right. not. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd like to talk about the Fringe Festival, the Ludlow Fringe Festival. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank the Ludlow Fringe Festival on behalf of okay. Mindy and myself and Valerie David yesterday and all mm -hmm. of the entertainers that have brought their talents uh, to the Ludlow Fringe Festival. Uh, and thank you, uh, Ludlow, uh, for creating this platform for many artists. How did you uh, become familiar with the Ludlow Fringe Festival? Uh, Valerie David. Yeah, Valerie told me because we were we we're in this group together. Richard is too, the mastermind with the different solo artists. Mm -hmm. and Valerie and I were partnered this last month, and she's so giving and helpful. And mm -hmm. she's toured her show all over the world, the Pink Hulk. And uh, she 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 shared it. She told me about it, and I and I'm, because I'm an Anglophile, I'm like, oh sure, anything with England. You know, of course. And I just said, okay, let me, you know, since I've been doing this marvelous show, and that's what's on my, you know, I'm doing this show currently. The Ageless Wonder show I haven't done since November in um, the triad in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, so I applied for this. I didn't know if they would accept me. And she said, yeah. So she, she, they accepted me. And I was like, okay, great. So I have two pre recorded shows. I have a children's mm -hmm. version that's going, it's on the website. And I have another show tomorrow that's pre recorded from lockdown. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is my only live show. Prior to this, have you done other French festivals? I did Hollywood French Festival with my uh, angel. Show. And I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Valerie yesterday. Uh, for those who may not know, can you explain what French festivals are and uh, what you get out of being part of a French festival? Well, um, they're all over the world. I mean, Edinburgh, I think the Edinburgh one in England, in, in is it Scotland, Edinburgh, uh, mm -hmm. the UK, wherever sure. it is. I haven't been there yet. But um, that one is, I think, the first one that started, I believe, in the 40s. It's been around for, I think, that long, the 1940-something. Um, and it's, it's performers from all over the world gather and do their show. Mm -hmm. And you could be a comedian, or you could do a one-woman show, or you could be a whole... Um, play, whatever, or there's a lot of stand-up comics. And so um, the benefit of it is, you know, you get a lot of reviewers, you can get good reviews, and you meet a lot of other performers all over the world. And it's it's an experience. It's really, it is an experience. Uh, and is your preparation uh, any different? Obviously, you're dealing with a camera. You're looking right into the camera. Uh, you're only seeing me right now, although uh, hopefully there are thousands of people watching you, not only in the United States and in London, but around the world. Have you embraced this virtual world that we're doing in? You've, you've mastered it, but have you really embraced it? I like it. I mean, I like doing live shows. I like doing live shows. So um, for me, it's like I like the interaction. Today, we're not, I don't know if the, the chats are on or not. But no, not the chats sure. are on. We're getting a lot of comments here. There are a lot of oh, people. I don't see anything uh, on mine. Uh, if you hit the comment button at the top, you'll see uh, your comments. No, I haven't even, oh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm not even on there. I don't even know if anybody's on. No, so it's, it's oh, all there. Sorry. Just I make, didn't even know because I didn't press comments. I was on private chat. Just make sure that you don't push any buttons and knock yourself off. Um, I want to say a few words, uh, you know, wrapping this up. Uh, I Once again, uh, thank you, Ludlow French Festival, uh, for what you do for artists everywhere. Um, if you've enjoyed the show today, and how could you not enjoy Mindy Fratkin, uh, please, please, please go to uh, either the Princess Wow page, which we are streaming through, 
or you can go to the Ludlow Fringe Festival, uh, which we are uh, streaming through. And please put your comments about today uh, because artists love to hear how we're doing. Uh, so let Mindy know about that. Uh, and uh, I also- and donations, we're also take accepting donations. And you know, and it's so appreciated to me, and it's this collective consciousness. I had no idea, in all honesty, that Nelson Mandela had said this, and you mentioned it earlier. And you know this for years, I've always ended my shows by telling everyone to go out and do something nice for somebody else without expecting anything in return. So what I would like everybody to do who's watching today is to go to your Facebook uh, timeline, look at your friends list, pick up the second name that pops up and pick up the phone and call them. Don't text them, don't email them, call them. And if you don't have their number, reach out to them and just say, I'm reaching out to say, hello, how are you today? I wanna make sure that you're smiling, thanks to Prince as well, and mm -hmm. that Richard Skipper sent you as well. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Mindy, uh, with any final words that you say. I'm gonna leave the screen, uh, as we okay. end our show, and okay. it's all about you and Princess Wow. Thank, Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Richard, so much for doing this. We really, Valerie and I really appreciated you hosting this today and Ludlow Fringe. And uh, we do, all the artists are accepting donations if um, if you're able to. And my smile is moving. Oh, God, okay. So if you're able to do um, a small tip of any amount, that would be great. And because um, we want to give um, a percentage to the Ludlow Fringe Festival as well to thank them as well. And um, my parting remarks are join the smile revolution and keep glowing. How can you glow today? Because we need to be an example for others. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not even easy for me as well. But there's always good going on and you can always be grateful for anything, for the smallest things in the world. It's like we're still here, right? And uh, we are going to get through this all together. We're not alone. You're always, you're always um, at one with spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, with love. There's always love all around you. And um, I wish you all well. And thank you so much for joining live or in the replay. And uh, keep smiling, keep sweet.